Mics are hot. Switching over in three, two, one, action. Hey, everybody, and good evening here in New York. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of 22 Now on Area 22 Productions. And, uh, of course, there's always crazy stuff here with production, and it's my fault that the speakers are on. There you go. We got rid of that. My engineer is already pissed off at me for that. In any case, welcome to another episode of 22 Now on Area 22 Productions. I am your host with the most of whatever that means. I am Mark Mendoza. I am no paid spokesperson. I'm the real deal here on this network. And we're bringing you another great show tonight. Of course, most of the time it's about music and entertainment. And uh, we actually, with the help of someone else, discovered a great talent um, in the rock world, up-and-coming talent in the rock world. Um, He is an international rock musician. He's a composer, lead vocals, lead guitar, and it has become a leader in the cutting-edge music genre known as power rock with a blues favor. Everybody, please give a very warm 22 Now welcome to Alex Cole. There you go, Alex Cole. Yeah! Rock and roll! There you go, that's the spirit. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mark. man. That's what it's about. (laughs) Anyway, Alex um, resides in Italy, and uh, so if there's a little bit of jittery with the video, it's just uh, the signal's got to go about 6,000 miles. So, um, And we're bouncing it off the earth and satellites and everything and then coming right and down. Forehead. And, and a forehead, yeah. And, and my engineer, Steven's forehead. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. So um, that's why you're wearing all the tinfoil, right, on your head? <laughs> yeah, you go. That's what we needed. Anyway, um, Alex is an up-and-coming, a great musician. He's not up-and-coming as a musician. He's already a great musician. Um, he's got a number of things out. He's toured uh, in Europe, in the States, and he has a great following already. And we're going to educate everybody today about Alex Cole um, and the fact that you got to listen to him and see him. Um, it, it, is, it is some amazing, it's great, fun music. It's, it's you rock out. It's the kind of music here in the States where you ride your motorcycle down by the beach. If you got a car and you got a convertible, you lower the top and crank the music. That's what it's about, man. It really is. It's good time stuff. Exactly. Great musicianship. So anyway, um, I'm not going to talk a whole time here because we haven't even had a word out of Alex. So um, Alex, welcome to 22 Now, man. Thank you, Mark, for having me here on your show. And I want to say hi to your listeners and watchers because this is just what it's all about, rock and roll. And actually, you said everything. You know, you did the great introduction by yourself. So I'm really happy about that. I don't have to say anything. I'm really happy. Thank you. And please, please. um, I know it's uh, it's around midnight in Italy right now, and that's where you are. And uh, you know, you your room behind you looks like everybody else's room that we interview, which is great because it's all about the music and the entertainment. I see everything you got around you, so that that's that's a great step. You know, we have we have a friend in common or people, someone that we know, Delilah from Rockstar Picks, who actually turned us on to you and um i gotta say i thank her very much she's watching and i gotta thank her because this is a great find um you know we listened to and watched your videos and listened to your music there you go look at that mark (laughs) we have to do a big shout out to delilah creely look at this and thank (laughs) you for sending me this great picture man yeah i mean you signed it for me i yeah you want it i can't i can't thank you enough it's just amazing look at this picture you know delilah Delilah, you you actually won that one because you guessed where that photo was taken, and uh, very few people did. I think there was only one or two other winners that that guessed where it was, and you won it. So we sent it to you uh, across the big Thank sea, you. the Atlantic Ocean. So um, I have to frame them, but you know they're abs- they're oh, kind of ready doubt, to be framed. <laughs> I have I have photos like that of um, you know my rock heroes and and entertainers that I like, and I'm still putting frames around them. So that's what it was. But anyway. Um, the uh you're a huge fan of twisted sisters and um i i saw what you wrote and how much you spoke about it um i know you're a tremendous fan of ted nugent's 
You know, it, it's uh, he's Absolutely. a great guy and a great, great entertainer. He really is. And uh, I, I hear some of your playing, some of your guitar playing is similar to his, and that is not an insult. It, you know what, Mark? It's it's not just I'm not just a fan. I'm inspired by you guys. I remember when I saw you in Italy it was back in. Uh, 2008 was your, you know, was Twisted Sister World Tour. It was back, you know, in Italy. And I was blown away by your energy on stage. And that was the time that, you know, I was going to watch and see and was like blown away by the ACDC. I saw ZZ Top, you guys. I mean, I wanted to recreate that kind of energy that I was, you know, bombarded by you know when i was looking at you on stage and i was like hey and well, you know i remember i was like you know 17 years old or 14 and i don't remember but i was going at home and i was like hey man i love that show i want to compose or write the music that has the has the same energy so here i am but it's not just it's not just being a fan it's being inspired and when i play on stage i have I have all you guys in me, you know, it's like, it's not a bad thing, I mean, I hope so, but it's, it's just all the inspiration, and I think what, what it brings us to be connected, it's the music, but it's also something very spiritual, and it, what, what's the rock and roll is about, I guess, right, so I think, what's your, what's your favorite, when you were young, I mean, what, what was your inspiration? Who you liked the most when you were going to shows? Well, um, I'm, supposed to, <laughs> I'm supposed to be asking you that, but I'll, I'll, I'll say a few <laughs> things because it's, it's, this evening is really supposed to be about you. Um, I, I, it, a very quick thing, you know, 50s rock and roll, the, the stuff that really rocked out, everything from Little Richard to Elvis Presley and um, Chuck Berry, yeah. everything that started in the 50s, uh, it, it, everything. Um, was a huge inspiration because that's the first time I really discovered rock music when I was very young. And after that, um, a few things through the 60s. But when I first started hearing things like Mountain, Leslie West and Mountain, and a band called Cactus and uh, Cream, mm. and Cream, yes, and all the blues based rock bands uh, of the time, and Savoy Brown and, and Nazareth and Uriah Heep, all those bands. Um, they were a huge influence on me, and it, it, it and it it go. It's I sound like that when I play and when I write music. Not all of my music is like that, but some of it is is blues rock based, like yours, and uh, and it all evolves. I mean, it was so many like Hubble Pie and early Led Zeppelin, especially and and uh, Hendrix. All of it was a tremendous influence exactly. on me, and uh, and it it keeps going because uh, I never stop trying to discover new music uh rock music or blues based rock or or anything to uh to keep going and i always end up hearing things that i really like and we're going to start covering some of this not only what i really like but some of the people around here and suggest and things like that so um when uh delilah suggested that we listen to you and you know bring you on and we listen to you first and yeah this is great and this is really good it's it's so good to see a young person with such great energy in music and on stage and like I said what you play is fun the music you play the way you come off the way your band plays it's yeah. all fun like I said it's the kind of music you play at a party exactly. the kind of music you play in your car when you're driving yes. fast you know so um, <laughs> yeah so, yes. and, and that's exactly. what it's about but what what I wanted to ask you to start with because it, tonight is really about you um, what's the first thing that you heard and you said I have to do that. And how old were you? Twelve. Actually, uh, performing on stages around Milan, dressed like Blues Brothers. Like I was blown away by John Belushi. <laughs> you know, so I wanted. I, I went go. I, I was going out and um, trying to emulate in the energy, the spirit, and you know, being like those guys. I remember I was dressing also like you know putting clothes like david lee roth uh but it, it was the spirit the group and i started playing guitar pre uh, 19 you know so um i'm starting with the teacher uh playing blues and i just wanted to play you know rock and roll italy you know i've done everything there but then 
when I won, I, I did uh, something, you know, theater and TV shows. Uh, I, I did some acting. But then I was like, hey, I'm, I'm looking at these videos like David Lee Roth, uh, Van Halen, um, Elvis Presley, Labels Brothers. Like, I want to go to America. So in 2014, I just um, landed <laughs> in Los Angeles. I knew that, you know, the Sunset Strip was the place. And I, I went to the, you know, the whiskey, the whiskey a go go, and I met, I met, you know, the owner um, that was Mario Maglieri, right? And it was so nice. I mean, he, he, he heard me. I, I tell you, I was actually at the Rainbow, and that you know, right? You know that better. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's a lot of good great memories. So Mario, you, you heard me talking in Italian and said, you know, ciao. <laughs> that oh you know Alex let me hear what you got I have some songs say Alex I'm not hearing music like this for 30 years you want to play the whiskey tomorrow and I said uh, I wait that I have to you know pick up the job off the table <laughs> I said yes I didn't have a guitar mark with me that time mm. because I I just went to Los Angeles for you know check it out and the same day I went to buy a guitar for like 250 bucks in a pawn shop and the, in the next day I was at the whiskey playing you know it was 6 p.m. but it was amazing you know that that broke to playing the Viper Room and you know I grounded it out I just you know step by step baby steps but uh, that's that's the place Los Angeles is where people actually I have a lot of fans and friends they're watching us now and I'm thankful to, you know, be recognized by all these amazing people where I recorded with, you know, like I've, I've done some of my songs, um, a lot of my songs there recorded with the best engineers that knows how to record rock and roll. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. So then I played in Vegas where I opened for Anvil <laughs> back in 2019 and where I met Delilah. Sure. It's where I met Delilah. Back in 2019, and then I did the tour with Ted Nugent, um, and you know, July uh, 2019 was amazing. But the guitar, it was something like it, it came out. It came out um, pretty pretty late. I mean, like Eric Clapton started in 19 and was like going to sleep with the guitar <laughs> in the you know the first time, well. like six hours. Like I wanted to play, 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 play. You know, practicing. Just rock and roll. But the, the showmanship, like you guys have, Twisted Sister have the showmanship, you know, you know how to interact with the crowd. That's what really interests me. I don't try to be perfect. You know, I sing. I want to be a storyteller, you know, the, the, the song that I play and sing. It's just, I want to show that people can relate from where they were listening to the 70s, 80s. But it's in the modern. I compose and perform, you know, high energy power rock music, and it reminds of that. But it's, it's you know, it's original, and people just like you guys. It, people just want to uh, have fun and relate with. Just don't think about anything else. I want to go to a show and see a show. <laughs> so I want to have fun. That's what it is. Blues, rock and roll. Is what we do. That's what I feel. I want to have fun, and. People relate with that. Just that you have to be professional too. There's a lot of, you know, setting up before the show, um, preparation, you know, studying, practicing, you know, rehearsals. Man, how many rehearsals? And I'm happy about it. I'm pretty picky, but it's 30 minutes, 40 minutes show. Boom! You have to give it all because that's the moment you have. In Los Angeles, really, you know, I grow. Make me grow fast. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. L.A. <laughs> just like New York. <laughs> just like New York would. Yeah, of course. Well, um, to see you live, of course we haven't, but we watched your videos. The energy is great. You put on a, a fantastic show, um, and it doesn't look um, at all like you haven't figured out what you're doing. Um, it looks like you have everything down. Your vocals are great. The, the songs are great. Um, and you're, you know, the idea behind everything that we do, even a show like this, is we're entertaining. 
Okay, so we're entertaining people. I mean, we might not be standing here playing music or singing, but we're still entertaining people. They tune into the show because they like it, and we have a bunch of fans. And I, I'm also watching the chat, and I'm seeing that a lot of your fans from Italy on here. <laughs> okay, he's got the that's awesome. Under their name, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm watching The Godfather or something. <laughs> All the names. No, it's great. It, it, it's fantastic. You know, Italy certainly loves their their rock and roll and their metal. So, um, the, uh, the 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 inspiration, um, the, the way you play guitar, the way you um, uh, portray yourself and it's not a portrayal it's a real thing so i'm using the wrong word there where did you get that soul feel on the guitar from or where did you pick it up from did you just develop yourself as you went along but you have a certain blues rock style that is not easy to come by i think it's uh, it's my fingers talk and uh, there's a lot of practicing a lot of practicing and listening to the greatest musicians like stevie ray vaughn ted nugent i love the guitar playing that you know they brought out combining the blues with rock and roll mm -hmm. and when i'm on stage i'm not i'm not trying to be like staring at the notes but i i know of course you know the pentatonic and everything but it's more like um i'm creating the melody uh, combined with the you know progressions you know the blues it's it's um you know people say oh you're shredding but I, i'm not relating with that it's more like maybe because i go fast and that's why i practice and it's um i guess it's more the passion and the spirit you know the groove mark the groove it's what i think it's what really uh takes me to playing those kind of solos i i, I listen to the drum and to pa -tum, pa -tum, to pa -tum, pa -tum, pa i mean this is just um <laughs> you know the the, the riffs the riff is what really matters yes, riffs and you know chuck berry chuck berry stuff and it it really what matters in rock and roll i guess oh absolutely you know in my opinion everybody everybody and and most people love music not everybody i have some friends that don't know what music is <laughs> they really don't i have some strange things <laughs> but um what most most people love music to some extent or love some type of music and it's there's not one type of music that fits everything for everybody so um but when you when you get a certain feel as um you know no matter what the tempo or the feel of the music of is it's the groove that you nod your head to or tap your foot to, um, and it doesn't have to be 4-4 rock music. Um, it could be just about exactly. anything. I mean, uh, it, but whatever makes you feel good and makes you groove as a person is yes. the kind of music that yeah. you like. And that's really important. That's really important because there's no one formula for music. There just isn't. It's, there's so many different types. And... Uh, and of course, that you you guys have a great groove. You, your songs all flow well, no matter what the tempo, no matter what the meter or or the feel of the song. So that's that's good because you you kind of bounce your head or you tap your foot when you're sitting down listening to your stuff and watching it. So then that's really important, and it's good to see that you actually understand that. Um, and um, some people love music yeah. various types of music but don't understand why they love it and they don't have to it's just if that's mm. what floats your boat if that's what makes you feel good and that's what you listen to but you certainly exactly. have a product that uh should do very well you absolutely should do very yeah very well. thank you thank you very much you know you know what i think it's it's also um i'm thankful to be surrounded by great musicians you know uh it's a Three piece power trio, but when you have people that you know play with you and you know bass drums and and you, and you are connected with them, you can just uh, have fun and go and go with the flow. I mean, the, the the musicians, you know, it's not just me. It's it's all the it's all the band. And I mean, Alex Cole, it's it's me. But it's uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be surrounded all the time by amazing musicians that actually it's not easy to follow me that's why i do the rehearsals and i'm and i, I do the improvisation improvising i love that because you know sometimes it's what blues makes you feel you know just loosen it up you know go with the flow 
maybe don't just do maybe two hours solo <laughs> but you know uh, you know people like to see uh, you know the show i like the show i like the show feeling like, like twisted sister you know ted nugent uh, today people want to see that i guess you know and that's what i am that's what i want to do that's why america when i did this tour with ted nugent it was you know his fans are watching us now and I made I made connections and they're so they're so in love with his music that I was like whoa after the show they were you know coming to me and shaking hands you know it, it was it was it was challenging in the beginning because I'm not I'm not lying about it but Ted was happy to have to have me on the tour and after the first actually Mark he came first early see how professional he is I knew that he came early the first night in Pasadena, I guess, to check me out. Of course, it's natural. I would do that. And then our friends in common, uh, then uh, came back, came to the back, he went to the backstage and he said, oh, we, we, we have a little technical problem. Sorry, one second. Sam. Um, the connection. <laughs> no problem. Are you, Steven, are you Sorry. able to... Um, swap the positions of me and Alex. I did, and then you were just looking off to the right side, which I can still do if you want. Um, I can uh, it right. Yeah, no, you can leave it then. Okay. Just leave it. It's better like that. Oh, um, okay. I figured I'd ask you while Alex was having a little uh, technical difficulty here. Okay. Uh, you're back with us, Alex. Now, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Yeah. Actually, your video was actually turning out quite well. Oh, 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 oh. Are you back, Alex? Yeah. Anyway, while yeah. Alex is fixing something, I want to give a shout out to a couple of people Sorry, I noticed second. in the chat. I want to say um, a mm. shout out to my good friend Alan Brown, Jim D'Amato, and of course uh, Roger Peterson. Okay. Um, all good friends. Um, I hope everything's doing well with them. Okay. Uh, of course, I see Alex has a, a ton of people I'm here. on there. Okay, Alex, we got you then. It's glad you're back. But okay. Alex has a ton awesome. of people listening Thank and you. watching, so it's good to see that. He's got his fans on board here. Um, but um, Yeah, so like I was saying, you know, the tour was, was amazing, and having people, like, you know, liking the show, it was really, you know, uh, um, that's what my show is and having this hard rock and hard fans you know like the, it, it was amazing and um you know signing posters and t-shirts to hard rock fans it was amazing and oh that guy came uh, in the backstage and 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 ted asked him hey what you think about the you know about the kid and he said oh that was great so ted was you know really happy and then we had a we had a chat in the in the green room in a San Juan Capistrano at the coach house after the show he started playing guitar for me like after two hour show man like it was amazing you know two hour show and really like all out full out and being in the back say Alex I really like your music I, I, I understand what you do I love to play more shows with you and you know Mark what can I say um, <laughs> you're I'm just blessed. It. That's good. You're saying it, and that's that's important. Let me let me go. Let's go back to something. Um, did you ever consider doing any other type of music, um, uh, whether it be uh, pop or um, you know top forty or even um, there's a plenty of, of big hits um, and stars in Italy. You guys have a huge music scene there. Um, or is rock music in your heart and the only thing you're going to do and want to do? The, I grew up with the rock and roll inside of me. That's the spirit that I have. I wouldn't, I wouldn't switch with, others, with other things. It's like that's that what brought me to, to play on you know, big stages in Arizona. At, um, Las Vegas and I see the people and this is what matters. I I'm, I wouldn't not be care you know be comfortable playing other. I did I did something in Italy like that back in you know years ago, but that's not my thing. Like uh, I did that. I was playing piano bars or you know playing with the MIDI tracks, you know like Blues Brothers, but also was like doing some Italian stuff, playing it. But 
I'm, I'm working so hard to get this going, you know, this this power rock, the rock and roll that people just related with. And I just, I'm sorry. I can't do that. It's something else. <laughs> Why would you say you're sorry? You don't have to be sorry for anything. No, I mean, I <laughs> that's it. So that's me. Yeah. You know, before you said that uh, you flew over to the States and went to L.A. Mm. and kind of had a great time here, it, it, it's so... Um, unique because a lot of bands and still do this. They, they're United, they're American bands or Canadian bands or even some South American bands, and they fly to Europe to make it. I mean, Twisted Sister certainly went to England first, and then the rest of Europe. Then we were much larger there than we were in the States until we made it big. So no, I understand. It, it, it's kind of opposite for you, which is fine. I mean, it, 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 as long as you get <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> I heard it, and also, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of big tours in Europe, and I would love to do that. I would love to, you know, um, perform to, you know, like, you know, the the big festivals I like that. But in Italy, I've done it everything. I've done it all, and uh, people in Italy they're watching us now, and I love they they are really a rock fans. They love my music. They love rock and roll. And but it was what was going on. It was like pop music DJs. Also, when you know, I left. You know, I, I I lived in Los Angeles for like seven years, so I didn't know what that what actually was going on, the music scene out there. I mean, here, but <laughs> I, I'm still I'm still <laughs> living in Los Angeles with my mind, with my brain. But it's um, it's pop music. It's more lyrical. I that's why, Mark. I grew up. Um, I was going to. I was grooming to become a pop star. One of you know my vocal coaches, and when I did some uh, you know vocal training, but that was not my thing. You know, like pop music, and uh, nope, just not your thing. Okay, that's not a problem. Not a problem at all. We were trying to, I wasn't trying to like make you do something different. I just want to uh, understand where you came from and and, and the basis of, of what you do. And I find that um, very intriguing when I have a guest on that I don't know who they are and their background. And um, you know, it's always interesting to me to say well, what what inspired you, what made you play the way you are, what makes you write songs the way you do, um, and even sing the way you do. And it's obvious, but I like to hear the person say where it all came from because that that means a lot when, when people know you're sincere about what you do it means even more you know especially to to rock okay. fans and blues fans yeah your, your background in music it means a lot to people so that's why i ask these questions when I, thank you so much i mean when i was three years old i was listening to my parents vinyls like michael jackson yeah. donna summer you know the rhythm and blues is so and that was the groove you know start growing inside of me and i you know when i when i found out acdc or jerry Lee lewis elvis presley Lee richards you know bo diddley chuck berry and Steve ray and you know george thorogood this is the groove man this is just ZZ Top, it's, mm, I can, um, you know, Cactus, I love that you mentioned Cactus, man, <laughs> Jimmy McCarty, uh, Rusty, Rusty Day, Rusty Day. his harmonica, sure. you know, that guy, I mean, that band was so good, I love Cactus, and, you know, Carmina Peace, wow, I mean. Yeah, oh. uh, you know, it's, um, <laughs> it's, I, I, you know, and again, um, I can't say, um, and it gets, it's not about me tonight, it's about you, so I don't want to say too much about you know my likes and things like that, but uh, um, it's good to see that musicians, wherever they're from and whatever they do, I've had plenty of people on there that knew or know who Cactus is and knows their songs. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of weird because I always thought that they were kind of a, a New York because they were all from Long Island, you know, except for Jim mm -hmm. McCarty, he's from Detroit. And uh, it was kind of, um, you know, refreshing that people actually know it and speak of a guy like Jim McCarty, the guitar player in Cactus, uh, which 
Cactus is one of my favorite bands. Um, the feel and the groove and the things they did, you know, put it forth. And before Cactus, there was Vanilla Fudge, and that was kind of a little bit more psychedelic stuff because it was from the 60s. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, you actually mentioned Jim McCarty, and that's he's one of my favorite guitar yeah. players. Um, I have a lot of favorite yeah. guitar players because I'm really more of a guitar player fanatic than a bass player fanatic, although I, I listen to <laughs> But, um, okay, so I see some of that in your playing, and I and I get it. I didn't I didn't know uh, th- that you knew that stuff. So um, yeah, that well, we are getting in, we are getting to know each other, Mark. <laughs> so I yes. think it's yes, we you are. Know, it's, that, that's the thing. Someday we could be on the same tour. Us. I would love I would love to jam with you one day, man. I really would love it. Well, it would be I, a pleasure. Some place if we're ever some place where we can do that, we'll do that. You know, yeah. who knows maybe. I'll okay. Play Plus, it. I know you love, you love, you love Leslie West. I oh, saw yeah. him. I saw him playing in Milan back in 2012 with Jolie Turner. Yes, of course. It was, um, it was it was awesome. It was like everybody was sitting. Mark, everybody was sitting. Wow. And when he played Mississippi Queen, I just stand. I said, I couldn't. I couldn't help it. And, and I would start dancing, and he looked at me, and he was happy. And the guy behind pat my back, say, you know, sit down because I'm, I'm recording. I said, ah, oh, okay. And then I met him backstage, sure. and it was so nice. I mean, we, we took a picture, but it didn't work. I don't know why. I was really, you know, pretty emotional. But, man, it was really, it was a great moment. Yeah. And I'm glad I can tell you that because. You also love him too. So, well, unfortunately, we recently lost Leslie West, um, and that's a, yeah. that's a that's a huge blow to the guitar player world. And what a great Dude. guy! What a great and funny guy he was. Um, I don't know if you know that I toured with him in the '80s. We did some short tours okay. for two or three years, and uh, the drummer was Joe, Fra- the legendary Joe Franco from the Good Rats at the time, and uh, okay. had a great time. And I got to play and tour with one of my heroes. Um, it, it just, yes. it was just some See? of the highlights. Of See? My <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually got to play all the songs that I grew up on, and um, uh, and not that that's the, the only thing that I liked and listened to because it wasn't, but you know, I got to see a lot of these bands that you're just speaking of in their heyday when they first started. You know, I mean, uh, I saw Cactus when I think when I was 15 years old. <laughs> I mean, it was uh, wow, it was an experience. Yeah, so uh, you know, things like that, and that's like the MC5, right? Oh, the MC5, without a doubt, the MC5, sure, crazy <laughs> band, crazy bunch of guys, a crazy band. But you know, influences are influences, and we all have them, um, especially when you're a musician. Um, you know, I don't care if it's soul or or or, or R and B, and you know, I, which I I love both of those, and uh, um, it, it, whatever it is, it all eventually forms you and gives you your your feel and sound and groove. Um, and it, I I constantly do interviews, and people ask me where I get it from because uh, I really don't play the same type of bass playing that I play in Twisted Sister and everything else I do. So when people see me, which until COVID hit, I was playing a lot and they would ask me, where do you get the feel from? Where Where's that coming from? I didn't know you played, you know, you could play funk bass and slap and and uh, and all this yeah. feel stuff and yeah, well, I mean, I, there's no need for that in TS. You know, it's all pretty much straight. So I get that all the time and um, so I have a wide, a tremendously wide influence of types of music and feel and it, it's kind of like all mushed together in a big vat um you know so i might play yeah. uh, a rock song with a kind of an r&b feel to it and people um they, they love it i mean it, it, they really do and it's nice to see that and yes. that people appreciate you for what you really turned out to be as a musician and you're you're heading down that road too that's exactly where you're going that's exactly what i saw on your videos and your music that we've been playing for the last, you know, week or 10 days or so since you agreed to come on the show. <laughs> so there's no two ways about it. We wanted to, uh, um, you know, learn all about you and, um, and here in the studio here. So, and we did. Um, Thank you. I, I wanna, Thank you for checking you. me out. No, no, <laughs> of course, man. It's all about you tonight. Also, go ahead. 
Go ahead. Also, I like to say thank you to I like to say thank you to Laura that she was she's been really nice. Yes. Uh, so. Setting up interview and uh, I, I, I and also yeah. She's thanking you now. I don't know if you can hear Sorry. it in the background. No. <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, but thank you. Also, you know, it's 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 kind of interesting. You asked me about you know my my background and because when I saw you guys, I think it was the movie, but the Twisted Sister movie then there was you, um, there was the time then when you were playing live in new york in clubs and you were showing you know the banner with like um we don't like uh disco oh, or yeah, punk the, the i don't disco, remember what was the disco <laughs> sucks banners yeah the disco sucks banner <laughs> disco <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So oh, that was yeah. like, wow. I mean, <laughs> well, in, this, in the states, especially in the New York area, disco, New York yeah. metropolitan area, disco was tremendous, and um, and it was there was a big backlash to it, um, the whole scene, and we kind of led that, you know, especially in in, in the early days, of, uh, my early days in Twisted, and before me, so the band was doing that in the clubs before I was in the band, and. Uh, you know, it was it was fun doing it, and you know, every place we played was packed. And uh, you know, our, it, it, TS played clubs for ten years before we got signed, so we were well oiled machine. But um, yeah, you know, we played four, yeah. five, sometimes six nights a week, three shows a night, and uh, it, it was crazy. But yes, I remember the whole thing, and I remember when <laughs> we finally played. Um, <laughs> uh, oh man, what what's wrong with me? Where's the the club in Brooklyn that they? Saturday night fee was filmed out with the mirror ball. Uh, you know, we, we played there and smashed the mirror ball. Um, so yeah, it was great times. It really was. It was great times and it was it was a lot of fun doing that. Um, you know, but uh it it, it uh you know it, it also evolved. You know, we finally got out of the clubs and made our jump and you know, made albums and toured and uh you know made some great videos and, and some more great albums. So it was all a lot of fun. It really was. Uh, you know, we all look back on it and uh and, and enjoy the time Absolutely. we talk and the funny stuff, you know. In, in the band, is all, the, the camaraderie was tremendous in Twisted Sister. It really was. Oh and yeah, the comedy. Yeah, not only the camaraderie, <laughs> but the comedy was un, out of control. It really was, and I think that's part of what kept us all sane. You know, always touring on the road and and traveling incredible amount of time and flying back and forth from Europe all summer long and just going away for a weekend. So we actually traveled in a week more than we were on the ground playing it was it was a lot it yeah. really was i'm not complaining believe me this is not a complaint i loved everything i i i love everything i do in music um and certainly on stage with ts so you have the same type of love for what you do and i've seen it and i'm certainly witnessing it here you know, having you on the show uh, with us tonight. So it's great stuff. I want to touch on something. You're a classically trained baritone tenor at a young age, correct? Yes, exactly. Wow. And what did you do with it? That's why. You I, yeah, my vocal coach, you know, like I was telling before, it were grooming me to become a pop star, but, you know, it was vocally trained in kind of doing. Oh, I studied. You know, pop music, by also Frank Sinatra and other stuff. But you know, to to find my range, you know, to my to find my vocal range, and that was also good because I I I, I can just be aware of what my you know limits are or what kind of you know kind of range I can sing. So I think it's good. But finding the you know the you know, that the kind of raspy voice when you're on stage, and that's something really that comes out of your soul. And I don't want to be like to make, you know, perfect. I just want to put it all out. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer live. I prefer live, man, when I'm, when I record. Yeah, that's good. You know, the studio is another thing. The studio, it's another world. But live, the live show, it's one-time experience. Oh, yeah. Really. I mean and people are happy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, playing live is is really when you have an audience that's giving you feedback. It's like a stand-up comedy, a com yeah. comedian comedy. It's like a stand-up comedian. Um, the feedback from the audience, especially positive, is is really important. And uh, it certainly yeah. looks like you have that at your shows. Uh, the videos I saw showed the audience very involved in what's going on. So that's a great thing. Um, but yeah, it's amazing that you're a classically trained a baritone 
tenor. Man, that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's my vocal rate. I mean, I'm not like singing like that. It's like more. Um, I cannot <laughs> sing like. Um, it's it's. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's not the voice of uh, Sebastian Bach. I mean, oh, it's no, or not at all. Brian Johnson. Not, not at all. It's more. It's my. It's like Paul Rogers kind of feeling right. like Ronnie Rogers James Dio. Sure. Uh, you know. Yeah, Paul Rogers is no slacker. <laughs> He's an amazing vocalist, of course. Exactly. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, when I was uh, in the club days at TS, towards the end of club days, I actually took some vocal lessons from Katie Agresta, a very um, well-respected vocal coach in the New York area. And once I started singing with her and, um, you know, doing the vocal exercises, and she realized how deep my voice was, she says, you're a basso profundo. And I'm like, okay, what does that mean? She goes, you can actually okay. sing opera. And I said, no, I can't. She goes, yes, you can. With your deep voice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, I, I have a deep voice. <laughs> Obviously, you can hear how deep my voice is. So, um, <laughs> but, yeah, she, she, she <laughs> wanted me to train to so. do that. And just like you didn't want to be a pop star i have nothing against opera it's amazing but i did, i had no no aspiration to be an opera singer i i really didn't and uh i don't think i could despite what she said um i could do some pretty good voiceovers but i don't believe i could sing opera that's a that's a very very special trait and a talent to do opera but um i think it's i think it's very cool that you have that talent that most people don't see but now i understand where some of your vocals are also the way you sing so it's it's good to hear that explanation. Um, so you also did um, some work with Enrico Santulli. He's a an amazing producer. Oh, yeah, he's an Italian. Actually, he's the guy uh, Enrico Santulli. He uh, was the guy that uh, put the guitar in my hands because it was um, going to record some MIDI track like Blues Brothers stuff <laughs> when I was back, you know, like 18 years old. And he said, yeah. Alex, okay, you stop singing with the MIDI tracks. So you have to learn an instrument. And, he, you know, he put the guitar in my hands, you know, like tuning, tuning with the, in the way that I could play with one finger. And I fell in love two weeks later. You know, he gave me a bunch of songs like Clapton, you know, Big Beatles to, to learn. And that's why I was so in into it that I, I went asleep with the guitar that um, uh, after two weeks he said okay Alex I'm not a teacher so I'm giving you a magic number and that magic number was you know become became my my guitar teacher my real guitar teacher that it's Claudio Bazzari that you know um, um, then he, he taught me for 10 years and you know um, that's why I'm lucky to have been surrounded by and still surrounded by amazing people that you know also put me on the right path kind of like but like you were saying you know the, the vocally trained it's part of it's part of the job it's like you have to be prepared before the show and you know i i jump rope and i i'm, I'm staying in shape i don't i don't do like you know something bad some you know i don't drink too much or something i just wanted to be healthy and like before the show i burn a lot of calories jumping and you know i'm i feel i'm an i'm an active person so i can stay i can stay see it but when you're a musician these days you have to you have to do you have to be focused and i you know check out my social media website i build my flyer so it's how i learned it's the, that's a learning process too you're actually and eating good i mean Oh yeah, I mean, and it, and it all shows. I mean, it, it shows in your music, your vocals, and your video performance. I mean, it all definitely shows. And I, I know that uh, Laura is posting uh, where they can hear everything, or is it Stephen that's doing it? I can't tell. Oh, actually, Carl Speeder. So um, Alex, Alex Cole, Ro Alex Cole rocks. Alex Cole, the rock composer. Yeah, you got to go online, everybody, and and check out Alex Cole. Um, She's playing some great rock music and putting on a very good show. So um, it, it's uh, it's really it's really good stuff. It really is. I, I like I said, what struck me about it is 
this is the kind of music that you would play at a backyard party. You want to drive your car fast. You know, you're going to have headphones on when you're on your motorcycle, which you're not supposed to hear in the States, and you're going to listen to just use one ear, but uh, pay attention to the traffic. But, yeah, it's it's rock and roll, and it's, it's feel-good music, and... Um, it really does. It, it gets the job done. And um, my friend, you're only at the beginning of your career, that's for sure. I could see it lasting for quite <laughs> some time. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's. A, it, I, I don't even. I can't say enough about it. I really can't. I'm at, I'm at a loss for words. Um, your drive, your talent, and your also your bandmates. You wouldn't be anything without a great team behind you. So um, and they exactly. also he's a great bass player, and a great drummer, and they yeah. complement everything that you do. Uh, it, it really is. It's great stuff. It's so refreshing to see something like this. And b- believe me, and I know there's a lot of great talent out there. It's just finding it and discovering it, um, so people can enjoy it is uh, one of the one of the jobs that we're going to do here at at this network and this show is to actually once in a while showcase some newer talent, like just like you and a few other bands that we've already had on. So we're going to do a little bit more of that in the near future. So that would be awesome. where do you see yeah. all of this going for you? I mean, do you have, do you have a, a, a schedule, an outline? Do you have something that you know is going to happen? Um, if we didn't have COVID, you'd probably be touring and playing. Do you see something that you're planning on doing in the near future? Of course. I mean, my life is on stage and I wouldn't see something different, <laughs> but I'm always busy. I have my own publishing, my uh, Unleash the Beast music publishing. And that's why I can, I own, I, I, you know, I own the control of my song. I control my song under hundred um, percent. That's why, you know, you can be here in movies and, you know, that's how it, that's how a musician can do these days, but you have to be a little bit smart and intelligent to study and inform yourself. And that's why one of my songs, Bad Boy Rocker, it's featured in a movie uh, that is about to come out. So we are all excited <laughs> and I see that it's coming in 10 days now. And I know the director is watching us and the producer. So I want to say hi to Giorgio Serafini, uh, Gina Goff, yeah. uh, the producer. Giorgio Serafini is the director, Gina is the producer and... It's a, it, the movie is with um, Christopher Lloyd and William Shatner. Gene wow. Smart is Zay Morales. It's called um, Senior Moment. And one of my songs, Bad Boy Rocker, is featured in this upcoming movie that is about to release in the United States at March 26th. So it's like 10 days. It's going to be in pay per view too. And the director told me it's Spectrum, right? You have Spectre, Spectre. Spectre in pay-per-view. Right, right. Spectre pay-per-view. Um, yeah, that's great. Spectre, man. Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly anything to sneeze at there. William Shatner and... Uh, and, and that's, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. No, that's, that's, that's amazing. Good for you, man. It, that shows that you've gotten someplace. And, uh, yeah. and we, we thank uh, <laughs> the producer and the director um, you know, for including your song in the movie. That's fantastic, you know. And yeah. the movie is called Senior Moment, right? The movie called Senior Moment, Senior. and we shot with the director the video of my song with the movie with the movie scene cut into the video. So I'm I'm super happy. I'm really excited to actually be part of a great team, a great production like them. It's a it's a family, and it's it's just um, it's just an honor to be featured in a, in a really you know Hollywood movie. But wow. I really like the you know. I, I like most of it, the the relationship that it creates when you work with people, you know. You are part of the process and, you know, Giorgio was keep sending me, you know, the videos and, you know, you know how, how he's passionate about how it's, it's really into this. And Alex, you know, I'm sending you the video with, you know, color correction and I cut, you know, I cut some movies, you know, some new scenes from the movie and, you know, the old the old team is amazing and um Gio- giovanni morriconi uh w- w- it's uh, it's in the um, it was helping Giorgio too halle scuff uh just just an amazing team man it's i'm um, just blessed to be part of it 
Yeah, it's great that you have a song on a feature film coming out. That's that, and I like the fact that it's called Senior Moment because I had one of those a little earlier today. A serious Senior Moment. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's just great. It's a good story, actually. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> we'll make sure that we watch it and uh, hear your song in the movie. Uh, so I want to I want to cover one other thing with you too. Not that it is. Only one thing I want to cover. I understand you've been also working with some charities and doing some good for people. Tell us about that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I love to play. Uh, I did some shows for the veterans in Los Angeles. Um, it was calling this festival Metal for the Troops. And it was amazing seeing all these veterans looking at the stage and you know, they were like happy to see, you know, because it was a festival, so we were playing with other bands, and then I did like something for the uh, against the bullism, and I played um, in Burbank for the for the um, for the music academy, you know. So that's like it's, I, I, I love to help, you know, in, uh, in the best way that I can. Yeah, the, the the guys in TS all have individually and collectively done a lot of charity work. Um, we here at uh, Area 22 Productions are also in the middle of a bunch of charity work. We have a fairly popular network here, so um, we help a lot. And I like seeing that when entertainers get involved and do it from the bottom of their heart. It means a lot. It really does. It means a lot that we all, exactly. uh, yeah. you know, we're all charitable and we help causes that are amazing and, and, and certainly worth it. So it's good to see you doing that. At such a you know young party, or thank you. Yeah, without a doubt, it, it, it's amazing. Um, it, it's it's uh, it's great to have you on. It is great to have uh, finally spoken to you. <laughs> and um, if we ever get around and you're playing, we'll be there. And uh, you know who knows, maybe we'll get a chance to play a song together or something like that. I'll certainly come up and that would be uh, awesome. I'll, I'll certainly go up on stage and beat the hell out of your bass player's bass. It won't be the same after I get done. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll bring bring my. We can own. collaborate on some songs. I mean, I love to collaborate with people. Sure. Actually, I, do I want to time. mention that Rocco Nugent, Rocco Nugent is featured in one of my new songs that is in my new album that I'm that actually recorded and it's and it's and it's ready to you know be released, but we don't know yet when. So, but Rocco Nugent, we became friends after the tour. He's amazing. Is it? He is also featured in the video, in the Bad Boy Rocker video. Mm -hmm. And I love to collaborate with people, man. It's uh, If you want, we can maybe just set it up something. And I hope to see you soon. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we got to get through this whole COVID I'm thing. I'm looking before. forward to it. Yeah, we got to get through this whole COVID thing before we could do anything live or, or pretty much travel at all. So, yeah. unfortunately, but you know, I know. that's what we got to deal with right now. But uh, nothing will ever... Yeah. take the, the heart and soul out of music for any of us so we'll make sure that happens once we're all safe and uh and you know can can make things happen um you got anything that you want to tell us that we haven't covered yet i mean please do so um you know my fans can check me out on my website alexcolrocks.com on youtube facebook alex Cole Rocks official uh instagram alex Cole Rocks. It's pretty much um, all over social media. I really like to connect with people. I was on the phone talking, hey, in two, in two hours, we are going live. You know, I'm really happy to be here. And, you know, my new album is coming up, but we don't know yet when to release it. But the movie is important right now. So, uh, Mark, I'm really happy to be in this show. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And the connection with Delilah, the rock star picks. Ever. You know, Laura, and you guys, I mean, thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure, really. I'm, I'm glad when I was watching you on stage, you know, I, I, when I watch you on stage, and now I'm talking to you, you know, <laughs> this is the rock and roll path, you know. Right, well, That's amazing, I, right? There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. The, uh, the energy and everything and everything you have and portray is, is incredible and uh, certainly well-respected by us. And I'm, I'm happy that you got a song and a movie, with great actors, and I'm sure that, uh, and not sure, I know that you have a great producer and, and uh, a, a great director on that movie. Um, so we'll watch it when it comes out, and uh, I'm sure we'll enjoy it, and certainly cheer when we hear your song in the movie. There's no two ways about it. 
I let you know if you want through Laura or we, if we can connect. So you you're gonna you're gonna be updated when the movie come and the video, you know, will come out. So we're we're all excited about it. But you said the movie's coming out in about ten days, right? Yeah, ten days. So I think you, you're gonna let you're gonna we'll be up. aware of that. So you're gonna know. We'll, we'll absolutely <laughs> look it up. Um, Stephen, do we have the picture? That was just that was just an excuse to be in contact with you. <laughs> to just, you don't to just be in touch. <laughs> you don't need an excuse. There you go. There's Alex holding the photo that he won because he figured out he actually had the answer to the question about where that photo was taken. And so many people tried, but I think it was only three, Laura, or three or four that actually won. Two people that won. All right, Alex was one of them. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, he got the uh, he got a personally autographed picture of uh, me cheering on or something like that. I I think I was about to kick somebody's ass or something, but I don't know. It's typical. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Alex, of course. <laughs> thank you so much for taking you know time out. I know it's late in Italy, and we, we're you. keeping you up past your bedtime no and. You know, so maybe you'll have to have some milk and cookies. Kidding. <laughs> to go to bed. <laughs> I have my coffee. There you go. <laughs> so no worries. I have my coffee, too. I do. I have my coffee, too. But um, stay in Cheers. touch with us and let us know what's going on with your career. And of what's happening when things uh, come back Thank a little. You. And we'll certainly support you in any way we possibly can. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Everybody, the legendary and very talented... Alex Cole tonight on 22 Now on Area 22 Productions. <laughs> Alex, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. We will, and we will do this again. You have a great night. We'll sure. talk soon. Good night, everybody. You too. We'll see you next week for another amazing guest and another episode of 22 Now on Area 22 Productions. Be safe and see us next week.